Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to do a quick review of our trip to Barbados back in December 2022. We're going to run through a few things like flights, accommodation, cost of living, activities that you can do on the island, and then just a few of our positives and negative experiences from our time there. So let's get started. First of all, flights and accommodation. So we booked our flights with Aer Lingus from Dublin to Manchester and then from Manchester directly to Barbados. Um, the flight cost for two people was in around £840 at the time, which we thought wasn't too bad. Um, you also got included in that your meals, which were quite tasty. And they even brought around snacks uh, throughout the flight as well, like pretzels and surprisingly some ice cream as well, which was quite nice. Thankfully, when we got to Barbados, our apartment was only a short drive from Grantley Adams International Airport, uh, which cost around $13 uh, US in a taxi. When we got to our apartment, we were pleasantly surprised. It was really well kept. The area was really, really nice, right on Dover Beach. We stayed in Sapphire Beach condominiums in St. Lawrence Gap. Um, it was quite expensive for us because we were just there as a couple but the place actually catered for up to six people so for the week we spent around £2,300 but we didn't mind spending this amount as it was our honeymoon and we wanted somewhere nice to stay that was right on the beach. Um, the apartment complex itself is as I've said really well kept, there's security there 24-7, um, it's gated so it's really really safe there especially for families so I would highly recommend it. One thing I noticed though on Airbnb when you're booking apartments and holiday lets in Barbados, I don't know if it applies on every home but for us there was an extra 10% levy um, that was brought in by the government on top of the fee that you see listed on Airbnb. So just be aware of that whenever you're booking your holiday let and uh, double check the final figure that you're going to have to pay just before you go ahead and book. Um, our host thankfully was very open and honest with this and we knew that from the start so there was no hidden costs for us. The next thing I want to mention is the activities that are available on the island of Barbados. We did three main activities when we were there, one of which was free which was just basically exploring different beaches uh, like Dover Beach, Bathsheba Beach and a few of the other beaches in around the area where we stayed. The second activity that we did was the Atlantis submarine tour. Now this was a really unique experience and we both really enjoyed it. The cost for this however is around £90 sterling per person. That was because we opted for the upgraded seats option. However, I wouldn't really recommend paying the extra amount for the upgraded seats as when we got there it was basically the same as everyone else's seat you were just slightly forward at the front of the, the cockpit where the pilot is um, but it didn't really afford you any better views than what anyone else got so all in all it wasn't really worth paying the extra and um, so i would just get the standard seat if i was going to do this trip again uh, the second trip we did was the island safari it was really good um, it was in around 81 pounds sterling per person for a four hour trip and this included a pick up and drop off service as well from most known accommodations in the area. Uh, we actually got to see most of the island within four hours and the uh, host Andre was really good, he was good fun and he had a lot of knowledge about the island, about the wildlife and just about the general history of Barbados as well so we really enjoyed that trip and as I mentioned at the start as well exploring some beaches we are very fortunate to have one of the nicest beaches, in my opinion, in Barbados on our doorstep, which was Dover Beach. Um, it was right outside the back gate of our accommodation and there were sun loungers there available for rent. For the entire day, you could rent two sun loungers with an umbrella for in around 15 US dollars. So it was great that we could have those facilities right on our doorstep. We also, as I've said, went to Bathsheba Beach. It was a really interesting experience as well and a great place for a photo too with the interesting rock formations that are there as well. Another point to note would be the cost of living if you're going to travel to Barbados. Simple things like the price of taxis and groceries can be quite expensive to what you're used to at home or in other countries you've traveled to before. To give a simple example, a large pack of Dorito crisps would usually cost around £2 in the UK. For the same bag around that size in Barbados, it's £7.81 roughly when you convert it at the current exchange rate. 
and uh, that's really expensive especially when you go to small local stores and uh, places like that you'd expect to pay a lot more um, than what you're used to paying but if you try going to some of the larger super stores like Trimart and places like that you will find slightly better deals however still overall it's very expensive to buy groceries there we found this out on day one as we stayed in an apartment so that meant we cooked a lot of our own meals and prepared a lot of our own food um, it was good to have the apartment and to have those facilities as eating out in restaurants um, can be quite expensive too it's it's not that bad overall but it can be quite expensive dep depending on where you go uh, taxis is another example uh, my best advice is to always agree the price before you go anywhere in taxis as even sometimes small journeys like only one mile up the road can cost 10 us dollars plus depending on what taxi you take so best advice is always to ask first before you agree anything with the taxi man as we come to the end of our video, I just want to mention a few negative and a few positive things we experienced on our trip to Barbados. Overall, firstly, I'd like to mention a few negative points. There was nothing really major, uh, but just a few small things that annoyed us a little when we were on our trip there to Barbados. But overall, we really enjoyed our time there and it was an amazing country with so much to offer, especially if you've came from a cold place like Ireland or the UK during December it was great to get there and have some Caribbean sunshine but first of all overcharging we were overcharged a few times when we were there in Barbados and we completely understand that people there unfortunately are living on a lot less um, than people in many countries um, we don't mind tipping we don't mind paying a fair price but unfortunately we were overcharged a few times, um, especially on the, the buses in and out of the town. We spoke to some locals afterwards and they let us know that we were charged double or three times the price what you're normally supposed to pay on the buses um, to Bridgetown and different other places. Uh, secondly, the only other point really that we had that um, could maybe irritate people after a while was street vendors and vendors on the beach. Uh, when you're trying to relax on the beach, obviously you don't want to be hassled too much by people trying to sell things. Again, we understand and we appreciate people have to make a living and I have nothing against anyone trying to make some money to look after themselves, look after their families. But uh, persistent sales pitches and things like that can get annoying when you're trying to relax as well on your holiday. Um, but overall, as I've said, we had a great time and that's really it as far as negatives go. Lastly, the positives. There's so many positives of Barbados that we couldn't possibly list them all. We met some amazing people. We met some great local people, had some great conversations. We really, really enjoyed the weather there. Uh, at the start of December, it's just coming out of the wet season and starting to head towards the dry season. But thankfully, during our entire trip there, in our last video you'll see a little bit of rain but honestly there was no more than around 30 minutes of rain the whole week we were there so it was great um we had great food when we were there we tried several different little restaurants that were close to st lawrence gap our favorite was mimosas it's right by the sea and had some lovely views we even saw some sea turtles while we were there and the food was great they had some gluten-free options as well um lastly we really enjoyed the beaches that was the highlight of our trip we really really enjoyed being close to dover beach as i've said before and uh, being able to just relax after our wedding um we were there obviously for our honeymoon as i've said so it was great to just go there and unwind and lie on the white sand beach enjoy the sunshine and the waves and uh, the sea there obviously was really warm so great for a swim um, the west coast is much nicer for a swim than the east coast the tides aren't as strong and the currents aren't as strong there so it's better for swimming uh, just keep that in mind if you're booking accommodation as well however obviously the east coast is more famous for surfing and those types of activities so we hope you enjoyed this quick review and i hope it's helped and there's some tips you can take away from it if you're planning to book your trip to barbados we highly recommend going to visit in 2023 it's a great country you can go there quite cheap if you really want to uh, we just paid a little bit extra because it was our honeymoon but there's tons of cheap accommodation available whether it be airbnb hotels etc and flights can be as cheap as you make them as well depending on how much uh, luggage and things like that you bring with you 
but overall a great country great experience and we hope to maybe make it back there sometime again in the future all the best folks see you again in our next video